Hi everyone, this is Michelle with Purposeful Happiness. I have not filmed in a while, but I've been receiving a lot of questions about how I've done the Harry Potter mixed media books. So I thought I would do a quick YouTube video on my process. And it's really so very simple that I wasn't sure anybody wanted a video. But here's a look at the supplies that I'm using. I, I generally just look for acrylic paints and I'll put a bunch on a paper plate on a color palette that I think I want to work with. They're basic acrylics. And then I'm also using the Tim Holtz brick and shattered glass stencils. And I'll use the matte gel medium to spread that onto the cover once I have it done. And of course I just grab a handful of brushes, any number of sizes. And I start with a prepared book. This one is from the Nick the Booksmith course that I took with the curved spine and you could use an altered book. And then I just take a very simple fabric, and here's the glue I use, and I wrinkle it up and put it all over the cover. Make sure it's bigger than the cover. And here's what I have at the end. So I put some black gesso on, and you can see I have already added the matte medium gel with the stencils, and I just put those in random places. I've also put some sparks there, or firework looking, pieces and I just use the end of my paintbrush for that. So this is the picture that's the inspiration for the book. A lot of purples and Harry Potter is not a real bright type of theme for me. So what I'm going to do first is look around the cover and see where did the gesso not really cover and I'll just go in and fix that a little bit. Using white fabric, you'll get some white spots even after you think you've covered it well. So I'm just going to go in and put a little bit in with my black acrylic paint. As you can see, there's some wrinkles in the cover and easy to get your brush into there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking random colors off my color palette and I'm just going to see what they look like. So here's a navy blue and I'm putting the colors everywhere. One of the methods that I use is if I put one color on one side of the book, I carry it across all the way to the other side. That way, if I don't like it or I want to change it, it's consistent all the way across the book. And here is the silver luster that I like to use. And hopefully, if I can't get these bricks to show, I'm using a little white and gray paint. And I'd like for this to be a little more pronounced. If I can't get it with the paint, I'll use that luster. That is the shattered glass piece. And I fast forwarded this video. I didn't think anybody wanted to sit and just watch me do random paint areas. But as you can see, I'm just covering all the little pieces that I had the matte medium gel. The sparks, the bricks, and the shattered glass. So here I have a little green. I always see purple and green together, so I thought I'd see how that looks. And with all of my brush techniques, I'm not trying to paint to cover up the entire cover. I want some of the black to show through. And when I paint on top of this green, I want some of it to come through. When you use a light brush stroke, you get a lot of depth to the different colors. And that's what I'm going for. I'd like to see a lot of different colors in my book covers. And again, just trying to get into the crease of the book so that it doesn't look so stark. And although this is all green, as you saw, my picture has more purple in it. So I'm going to see if I can add some purple. And I definitely don't like that. Too bright, I, too much of it. And as you can tell, way too much of the purple there. So what I decided to do is take a black metallic paint, black here, and tone it down. And this I like because the, the book that I'm going for, the cover, I want it to be a little more muted. And if you can see, the black metallic paint does have a little sheen to it. And so that's the one I'm using. I didn't realize that it went so quickly. So if you want to know what that is, I can certainly post that later. And so again, whether I like the purple or not, I'm going to take it all the way across the book. And I'm just using a deep dark purple. And I'll come back over that with the metallic black to mute it. And I'm avoiding anywhere where I had the matte gel medium because I, had, I want that to pop out regardless of what color the cover is. 
So I'm generous with the purple, but I'm not completely covering the book. I'm just lightly putting pressure on this brush. Now I'm just blending it in. And here's where I'm putting in some of the black, just to bring down that purple a little bit. And I'm starting to like the green peeking out of the purple in the corners of the book. I wasn't sure how that would look, but I, I think I like that. You can do this with any color scheme. I just put different colors on my paper plate and test it out. And the beauty of these acrylic paints is if you don't like that color scheme, start over and try another one. You really can't go wrong with just experimenting. Now what I'm going to try to do is pop out a little bit of these sparks. I'm trying to do the sparks when Dobby snaps his finger and all the sparks fly out. I'm trying to emulate that on different parts of the book. So in the YouTube videos I watched, it said it's where it's the hottest, it's the most bright. So that's the middle of the spark. And I'm not really liking that. It didn't really do what I thought it would do. So what I'm going to try to do is add a little red and orange and see if I can't get a more fire-like color added to it. And the beauty of this is it doesn't matter how sloppy you are, you just, you're working with it constantly. So I'm going to try to add a little yellow here, or orange. And I wet my brush just so that it would run around the matte mill, uh, matte gel medium more efficiently. And so this doesn't look too great, you know, and a big part of painting these covers is just trying to figure out how to bring it to the level that you're satisfied with it. And that's different for everybody. Since I had an idea of how I wanted that spark to look, in my mind I'm trying to recreate that on this book. And this is definitely an element that I struggled with in this piece. So I'm still just layering the colors. And again, it looks really just like two couple of big blobs of random paint. So what I think I'm going to have to do is take that silver luster after I add a little color and try to pop out the details of the spark. And we'll see if maybe that would work. And I put the picture down to see, am I hitting the right color scheme? And so far I'm there. You can tell that spark is much brighter. But I'm just going to do the best I can to try to get there. I don't think the cover is matching quite, quite where I want to be. So I'm going to take a little light blue and bring the wrinkles of the fabric out a little bit. So we'll do that quickly. And of course, as I do this again, I'm not painting over the matte gel medium pieces. I'm just dry brushing here, just trying to highlight the fabric. And that looks a little bit better in color scheme. So I try to keep whatever color scheme I'm going for next to me so I can continue to add to it. And again, that was just a simple brush of some blue to bring it back in. And of course I covered the spark, so I have to come back in and rework it. And as you can tell, it, you can rework these areas multiple times and the book cover will hold up to it. So that is the current cover and we need to go back in and make sure we get the creases. I'm going to do a little purple here. And I haven't decided if I want to use a Dobby picture or if I want to do an abstract sculpt, sculpty clay piece. So I'll play around with that and see what the book really calls for. And so now I'm going to go in and see if we can do the bricks. As you can tell, oops, not yet. I have the Distress Spray, the gold, the silver, and the um, beige and some gold powder here. So I'm probably going to put all of this on the book at some point. And as you can tell, the bricks aren't really popping out. But as soon as you add this silver luster, your details and your 
matte gel mediums will pop almost immediately with very little effort. So this cover is not very complex. It's just a matter of layering different techniques on top of it. And the silver really is helping with the, the look of this. Again, if you don't quite get the silver luster in, you can use your paintbrush to push it around. It's creamy, so it's easy to move. I would warn you though, once you put it on, you cannot take it off. So if you make an error and you did not want it silver, you'll either have to cover it really well or paint over the top. You can't just simply wipe it off. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this silver to the edges. Give it a little more dimension here. As you can tell on the book, you still have green coming out, purples, blues, black. So I haven't covered the black gesso. I've just simply tried to enhance it. Now I'm going to try to see if I can pop these sparks out a little better with the silver. So I'm just going to put a, the biggest part in the middle and then try to rub it around and see. And there you go. With the yellow, you get a little more brightness to it. So an imperfect science, but if you keep working with it, eventually you'll get to where you want the piece to be. And I'm just still working these corners. And if you have any questions about the techniques on here, please feel free to send me a note. I don't always know what seems basic or maybe too advanced. I never know what people need to hear. I haven't decided what to do with the key and it is glued on with the matte gel medium. And I think first I'll put some silver or a gold distress spray. And of course my sprayer is not working. So what do you do? You improvise. So I just am going to drop some around like a dropper to add a little bit more to this book. I want this really to look like it's sitting in somebody's den or in their backpack or hidden away for years and years. And so I don't want it to look brand new and perfect. And that's what you're seeing with this cover. Really, there is no method. You just pop it on. And I really wasn't a fan of the big blobs of gold, so I'm just going to dab a little bit of it away. And with Nick the Booksmith's covers and the hardboard that you use, they really can take a lot of paint and a lot of um, texture on the top of these. I've never had any issues with it. So here is a gold powder. Now, something unique about this gold powder is you could use a little paintbrush and paint the lines and, and really put more on. What I'm doing here is I'm using it almost like you would a blusher, and I'm just dusting a gold shimmer across the entire book. And I know it's very difficult to see on video, and I'll hold it up here in a second to see if we can tell the difference. When you're in person, you can tell. Yes, it's very difficult to see that shimmer. And I, again, I carry everything over to both sides. And you just continue this process until you're happy with it. Everybody has a different threshold. And what I want to work on is how do I get that key to pop out? It's blending into the background a little bit more than I like. So I thought I would try these cream lusters and maybe pop it in. I didn't like that, so I put a little gold in there as well. I did like that. And this is essentially the entire mixed media Harry Potter cover. I will determine what the next stage will be and either post a video of a picture or a picture for you to see how it turned out. And thank you for watching. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.